call the select board meeting to order. It's about 7.04 on the 13th of June. I have a point of order, please. Mm -hmm. um, in lieu of what has happened uh, in Orlando, Florida, I wonder if the board would be willing to uh, have a minute of silence before we begin our meeting for um, the survivors and for all of the families. That has affected us, our whole nation, tremendously, and I think it would be very appropriate for us to take just some time to think about it. The rest of the board have a thought? Sure. I have no objection. It's a good idea. Then let's start. We have um, the first order of business on the agenda is the calling for any additions to the agenda. And I have one myself. Anyone else have any additions to the agenda for tonight? So the only one I'll bring up is um, we're going to need to discuss um, some of you for the uh, tax sale. We brought about this a couple weeks ago, and we just need to. I'll go through it when we get to it. But Where would you like that? I'm going to just be 9.1. We'll do it right after the ninth one. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I thought you were also going to talk, uh, I thought that was going to be about uh, recognizing that we're going to set aside a few minutes to discuss uh, the road conditions with Keith. We're going to have Keith, um, I yeah, did so put him on the agenda, but we could add him to the agenda, and that way he could um, perhaps get out here if we put him early. Whenever you'd like to uh, include that. Sure. Let's put him. Put him in 5.1. Put him in between the. Uh, and I say that because um, he may be interested in what Rob Willis has to say when we get to number five. So we'll add um, Keith in that point. And this is my error for not thinking about sticking Keith in there when I wrote it. Keith, sorry. Any other agendas to uh, add, add, uh, additions to the agenda? Okay, thanks. So. Next order is to approve the minutes of May 23rd select board meeting. They were mailed out to everybody, so everyone's had a chance to um, read them and uh, review them for additions, deletions, or changes. Anyone? Minutes of the 23rd. Move to accept the minutes for May 23rd. Second. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, so it was a pass. The, uh, oh, any objections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Good, thank you very much. We are going to move on to number three, which is approval of the timesheets for the town offices, Lister's Highway, and transfer stations. We'll accomplish that at the end of the session. And we're also going to sign these select board orders at the end. What I'd like to start with on number five is uh, we've been trying to do this for several weeks now. Rob Willis, who is our town constable, has asked me to have us discuss what to do with the, um, when he runs across sick or injured animals, and how does that get paid for? Rob, you want to speak to that? Um, certainly. So, um, normally, if uh, I find an injured animal on the side of the road, they have a dog tag on, I call it the person or persons who own the animal, and say I found your injured animal, I'm taking them down to the vet, um, what type of arrangement do you want to make? And they obviously get their car and come down to the vet and take care of it themselves. But on the um, chance that we end up with an injured animal that we cannot find an owner to, um, we don't want to just necessarily leave the animal on the side of the road to fend for themselves, we can't do that. So we are um, obligated to take the dog or cat or other injured animal down to the vet. And um, I talked to Bob Treat down at um, Green Mountain Veterinary, and he says it's pretty much a minimum fee of about $100 for an animal to come down to the vet. And what they would do is basically um, do a quick evaluation to see what type of shape the animal is in, if it's salvageable, so to speak or if it's something that um, is going to be a very costly um, fix for whoever, um, such as a broken bone or you know, other problems that are going to be um, 
take a lot of surgery or whatever. So the diagnosis and the treatment to stabilize an animal is a minimum of about $100 um, for whoever. So that's where my point is, is that if we don't know who the animal belongs to, um, it's up to the town at this point to cover the cost of the vet fee. Um, and to put an animal, euthanize an animal is about the same, that one dollars. So if it comes down to we get the dog or animal down to the vet and he determines that the dog has extensive injuries and it cannot be saved, then we would be um, in for about $100 to euthanize the an animal. And then obviously we put the animal on Facebook or um, on one of the, the dog finder pages or animal finder pages to try to find the owner of the animal, let them know what happened. Um, I tried calling the uh, vet in um, New Fame, didn't get through to them. Um, left the message for them to call me back, they never did. To try to find out if they were about the same cost. Um, so my point is, is that there are circumstances where it happens where someone calls me up and says, I found an injured animal, I'm taking it to the vet. And so my hands are all of a sudden tied because this is a, an out of state or a Vermonter that's going to take the animal to the, the vet. And, um, and now I know about it. So we have to come up with some type of plan uh, in order to be able to afford to. Um, How know. often does that happen? Uh, probably. A couple of times a year. A couple of times. Unfortunately, the last time it happened, it was a cat. And we, uh, they were out of staters. They took the, the cat down to the top treats. It was a pretty expensive fix, and they ended up adopting the cat. So, and they they were willing to pay for it and everything. So, um, that's that's not what's happened that way. Um, I think that Paul researched it, and if someone takes the animal down to the Wyndham County Mace site, which is a lot of times what does happen with animals that are found, they'll call me up and say, we found an animal, what do we do? I said, if you're headed south, just drop off to the main site. We have a, a contract with them to take animals that are, are found in the town. But if that animal is injured, they don't have a vet on premises, they're going to take that animal to a vet, and then the town's going to be responsible for whatever the vet fees are. Um, and that would be down the ground. More than likely. So I guess my question is, is where do we come up with funds to deal with that if we ever have to? I had, I had one thought was that we are, uh, you know, every year I go out and I try to collect uh, fees from people. Uh, unfortunately, most of the time, um, there's always some situation where if we can get the license and get, the, and get them rabies certificate in place, that's enough at some points for people. Um, and it's the you know the fines that we do collect. We could maybe start a fund and use the fines to help to um, for that particular. Where do the fines go right now? What fund are they going to? Um, There's going to be a certain amount of expense that you have to cover. Yes. Just for your own running around. Yeah. I I think that the most of you know the last time it was a couple years ago when the fines actually came in and they. Uh, just they wrote a check for the town of Jamaica, so I'm not sure where that funding actually went. So is it in the general fund? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we haven't gotten any for not in a while. Yeah. We did get some in-town fees from the humane society, so those could be set aside. Mm -hmm. I guess my concern when we start talking about this in our contract, it covers. Uh, that we are clearly responsible for any fees incurred by women, by, by the Mesa side. But it doesn't speak specifically to what you're talking about. Yeah. And so the question is how then do we manage this? Do we amend the, the uh, ordinance? Do we wait for you know the occasional and then just have the general fund? Um, what, what's your thoughts? Well, certainly uh, if we're taking in other kinds of fees related to it, they, are, they ought to be offset by, by these costs. There ought to be a special line item probably in the budget for that. Uh, 
So it's, it's not something that happens very often, but when it does happen, yeah, it does happen. <laughs> it, and when it does happen, I want to be able to say, yeah, go ahead and treat the animal or, or you know, give me 24 hours to try to locate the owner of the animal. And it's still a net positive. I mean, you know, I would think, you yeah. know, whatever it costs us is going to be less than whatever we take in. Well, that sort of depends on the... Uh, well, and there's dog license fees too. So where do those dog license fees go? Into the general fund? <coughs> yeah, so again, there, there's an offset revenue in that direction yeah. that can be used towards that. Okay. Towards that. Yeah. So then the hard question. That seems logical. Yeah. The one that nobody wants to ask. Where do we draw the line about saving them versus euthanization? Well, I, I would definitely say that would be up to the vet. Yeah. And just because that would be the call that I would want to make. But if the vet says, listen, this dog or this animal's not going to make it, um, you know, you're just going to waste your money trying to save it, then... I think that was relatively easy. It's one on the line. If we can save it, but it's going to cost you $1,000. Yeah. Who calls that? You that talk owner. Owner. Are you talking about for, for an unclaimed an animal? Unclaimed animal. You pick something on the side of the road or key to this group, find a broken dog. Take them to the vet. The vet says, "Yeah, we can fix them. It's going to take, you know, a cardiac catheterization, yeah. whatever. It's going to be a thousand or whatever. Pick a number. Yeah. Who calls it? We who are picking up the tab. We don't know who the owners are. The vet is saying it's just not cost effective. I mean, we can fix it, but right. You know, but isn't that what you're saying? That anything over a hundred dollars, we would automatic or we would have the vet make the determination." I would whether say, it's worth saving the dog or not. I would say that, you know, there's definitely, we have to draw a line somewhere, like you mm -hmm. say. But I would say that if, if, you know, you picked up a, you know, a broken dog or I picked up a broken dog or someone just shows up with a broken dog and says, well, we picked it up from, you know, down by the Keep Sports, um, you know, on the side of the road, then, uh, but it's going to cost, you know, a couple thousand bucks to, to save the animal. I would say that um, keep the animal at that point, um, alive and do a search and give it let's say 48 hours and if no one comes up and says we're missing our dog or we're missing our cat or whatever then the line is drawn there's no one that is going to um that is uh part of that animal anymore mm -hmm. i mean I, I hate saying it that way because all the animals sure. are you know, creatures that we should try to save but if it's going to cost us more money, and that, and that, no one's going to take the animal after it's been fixed. Then um, I think that would be a kind of a line drawer right there. Yeah, I know on our road we have people who don't want dogs any longer, and they just drop them off, and then they come wandering through the yards. You may have that on your okay, road. Okay, we don't have it. We do periodically. Though, yeah. Thank God. <laughs> I would, I would say that's a reasonable suggestion right there. Maybe you cap it at a, a 150 or 200 dollars, yeah. and uh, and then and then if you if we are are able to find the owner at that point, then they can cover the costs beyond that. Oh, well, <coughs> they can cover that cost right. Well, that cost yeah. and the decision. And, yes, and then they can make their own decision. Right. Yeah. Um, so I guess what we're saying then is up to let's say 150 for an argument. Um, palliative care. Pending 48 hours or the owner's coming for it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. The owner's the dog, you know, take him out of pain. Yeah. But keep him alive until such time that you either have 48 hours or the owner's come for it. Yeah. My other question on euthanization is what happens to the, to the body after uh, it's, it's euthanized? I mean, I remember when we had to do our dog in the middle of winter when we couldn't bury him in our, on our land, it cost us, I think, $250 to cremate him. Mm. So there's a, I guess there's a question as to what, what happens to the body after if it's not a claimed animal. Yeah, that, we'll have to check with him on that. Yeah, because, uh, uh, do we have a pulpit cemetery in Do we have the adult cemetery anywhere? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is it common for them to cremate the euthanized animals? Uh, I am, I'm not sure what the cost would be, but I'll find out. It's about $250 we did it about three or four years ago. All right, so that's kind of what we're, we're talking about. You're making for the presentation. I think we all have to think about how we want to do this because it's kind of a subjective call. Yeah. And it's a tough one um, to make decisions for animals that aren't yours. But at the same time, 
you're put in a terrible position if we can't support you. Yeah. So can we think about this, process it, and come in for the next select board meeting with a dollar value or a decision? And can you check on the cost for the you? Uh, yeah, I'll find out the, the, the actual cost. <coughs> of the and check with the other vets too that you yeah. mentioned. So that we at least got this in our hands and we start thinking about it. Yeah. So we can give you some, because that's a terrible position for put you in at 2 o'clock in the morning trying to decide what's best for an animal you don't know. Yeah. Okay, any other comments or thoughts? Do you have any other questions for us? Anything else? Okay, so we will put this, um, we won't make a decision what to do, we'll ponder it, we'll come up with a decision during the next select board meeting. Let me, does that work for you? Yeah, that works great. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to the next item, which sort of, we just introduced Keith Hazard, who's our road foreman. Anything you'd like to share with us for this month? Or last month, for that matter? Nothing in particular, just business as usual, really. Uh, grading, ditching, uh, maintenance items that come up frequently lately. How far along are we on the, on the grade? We've gone around once, we're working on the second time. Now when you say once, that's the April, May? Uh, well, we've done the, the initial smooth up, and now we're going around and shaping the roads, and trying to ditch them as we go. And we're seven eighths done, really. Um, but there's been some maintenance issues we've had to take care of. Maintenance in the vehicles? Uh, yeah, the mm -hmm. grader the grader had an issue. Uh, our backhoe has an issue that um, the lift piston um, needs to be repacked. So that's kind of on standby right now. Is that the one that's going to be replaced by the new wheel excavator? Yeah, replaced as the front line vehicle, I guess we're keeping it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in time we could replace mm -hmm. it and we can keep right. it. Any news on when the uh, the machines come in? Uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday? I talked to him today, the machine itself is prepped and ready to come, but they managed to ship up about the buckets. So the buckets are on their way and they said today or tomorrow <laughs> they should have buckets here and as soon as they get the buckets here, then they'll get transported and they're, they're suggesting Wednesday or Thursday. So what's wrong with the grader? The, the shims that hold the mold board, mm -hmm. they're worn out. So what happens is the, as you grade, the mold board does this, and it makes washboards. So we have what you to, want. <coughs> what's that? What you want. So, uh, so we'll replace them? Yeah, well, we we'll replace us. Oh. It's, can you the, the other one? Yeah, it got sent away to New Hampshire. Okay. So that's not something you're doing? No, it got sent away. I know that you've been busy on the roads and that you've had equipment problems. Um, that metal that's up at the transfer station, mm -hmm. when you have a chance, if you can stick it in the metal bin. Half of it went in this afternoon. Oh, wonderful. Um, Did we get a... Uh, Right. Metal picked up recently? Uh, we just had metal picked up last week. I think on Thursday. Half of it went in. The other, we'll have to wait for the other half. It, it would be up over the top. Yeah. And they don't like that. Okay. Um, that part's done. Oh, thank you so much for doing that. Any other questions for Keith? Yeah, you guys are going to clean out culverts that you're filling up there? Mm hmm. Because yeah. it's standing water up on South Hill. So. Figure mm -hmm. that's probably not something that you yep. necessarily that's, suck it work, but more that's, shovel work. That's sort of what we were sort of what we were waiting for. The, we're going to go up through the whole way up South Hill ditch, stone line ditches, replace culverts. What size stone? Uh, it's six I think they were like four, four to six, uh, or stone dam ditches. And, uh, to slow the dirt from running into the culvert. Exactly. Okay. Every like 50 feet, make it like a little stone dam. Um, that's sort of kind of just what we were waiting for to make. Uh, trouble is with a crater, you can't get over to the edge close enough. 
because it weighs so much, yeah. and you do that. So we were kind of waiting for uh, this and excavator gotcha. and uh, to do it that way. Well, I'm excited to see the roads with the new equipment. Excited? I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I can't wait to see our roads fixed. Okay. I think well, it'll be a good thing. I mean, it, it, the reality is it's 65 miles and it doesn't happen in 10 minutes. Oh, with, well, well, well. With three people, I mean, it, this is like a three-year project, essentially. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen quick and... Um, oh, I know it doesn't happen quick, but the sand going into the culverts does. Oh, I know. And I know. that's a problem. It is. in the ice up in the winter, and the water has no place to go. Totally. Sage, Sage Dunbar, Dunbar was, was, road. Yeah, Sage Dunbar was horrible, and there was a big ice dam going across an entire road. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The, so, old, the old metal culverts freeze. Yeah. Well, or culverts that are full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Frankie, anything else you want to add? Do you have a question for Pete? Just, no, I just, there's, right across from Pete Smith's place, right at the edge of the road, there's a hole where it looks like it's kind of dangerous. I don't know the proper way to report that. I don't know Pete Smith's place is, does that matter? No, that's State Highway. Yes, that's State Highway, yeah. Pete Smith's They do the sides as well. Bring your turkey mountain road. Oh, okay. So how does it get reported? Uh, Somebody's well, I've reported it because my mailbox is there and I bottom out every time I go in there with my car. In the place I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Does something you're aware of? Oh, yeah. So you say that's a state issue? Yes. Oh, so they'll do it. It does look like they're going to um, pay from yeah. the fire department up. Yeah. Not too far. But up as far as, I think, uh, Stone Hedge? Yeah. Stone Hedge's road, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be nice. Yeah. And be aware that's going to make things a little tricky here for a few weeks, but hopefully it won't be more than a couple of weeks. <clears throat> it's going to be less than that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Four days, I think, is what they said. Yeah, yeah. 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 Four days, government speak. Okay. Now, just everybody knows that that is just a, a quick little five-year leveling project. It's not intended. Temporary fix. I, I, every time they they talk about paving Route 30, a different part of Route 30, I always complain, why aren't you doing Jamaica? Because they're doing from Rossville to, yeah. to Route 11. Next. And I, I keep complaining to VTrans, why are they jumping over from the town to line where they fixed, finished, what, two or three years ago, up to Rossonville? Because from Rossonville to Manchester is absolutely horrible. It's very horrible. It's worse than what we've got. That's probably I agree. <laughs> but I would like to see Jamaica at least put on the list of, of yeah. things, and that hasn't been done yet. And I complain all the time. Do they give you a reason? No. Oh. <laughs> so you say that's the way it is. <laughs> but this Rossonville to uh, Route 3, I mean Route 11, has been on their books for three years. And they've had problems funding issues, so they've been keep pushing that back another year, another year. We have every confidence that we will keep us posted. And stay on there. And keep them posted too. Yeah. They will be. Yeah, they do. Now, are they going to do the same thing they did to Route 100? Up in, up in Rossonville? Yes. yes, that's a big problem. They're going to take it down and, and refill it. And I think so. Oh, they're just putting up, no? No, in, in Jamaica, that's what they're doing. Okay. But they're not doing well, that. The Rossonville is Route 11. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you very much. Moving on. Anything else, Keith? Uh, no? Thank you for what you've been up to. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it. Thank you for your time, sir. So much. Uh, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up in uh, Bellows Falls? Uh, next on the item. Move. Okay, hold on. I thought the email said it's tomorrow, I think. I'll check it when I get home. Yeah, I think it's tomorrow. Okay. okay. Alright, the next item on the agenda is um, the Cotton Belaski Architectural Services contract. Do you have the contract? I have the contract. Lex has been the one that's been uh, working on this, but I'll uh, speak to it. I guess the, uh, the bottom line is that the uh, compensation for the entire project is $28,500. That includes uh, schematic design, consultation, and program development. I could be more specific if you want. There's a, there's a whole paragraph there on that. Design development, which includes floor plan elevations, foundation, roof framing, cross section, exterior wall section, structural details, schematic electrical plan, 
plumbing plan, HVAC plan, window and door schedule, room finish schedule, project uh, manual containing project specifications, division of fire safety construction permit application. That's the uh, design component of this. There's a bid process. They will uh, assist the town in the bid process and aid in the negotiations with general contractors. There's construction administration. Shall verify that the work being performed conforms to the construction documents. Schedule or service shall include scheduled site visits with a written report, review and approval of shop drawings, review and approval of contractors' change orders, and payment requisitions, and then changes to the contract. As I said, the compensation is 28.5. That's for the consultation, development, design, bid, and contract negotiations. Any other work beyond that uh, is at $125 per hour. For additional drafting services, it shall be at $75 an hour. The terms are $12,500 up front, uh, $12,500 at completion, uh, completed construction documents. Completion of permit application and bid process, 3500 and then the rest of it is, is determined. Thank you. Now, I've got over it, but I couldn't find anything that differed dramatically from any of the contracts that looked like were pretty complete to me. So we would entertain a motion for... I have a question. Sure. Uh, where does this money come from since we don't have the bond yet? Uh, what will happen is uh, we haven't talked. We haven't talked about the bond. Uh, uh, the bond would be issued sometime in, J in July, and uh, uh, once that's issued, then it's available. It, it sits on a, a fund at the state. We don't get. They don't send that money to us. Right, but it sits want, in the fund. They want this money at the time of signing the contract. Correct. And so we would, we would borrow that money from our reserve accounts. Okay. And then uh, when, when we get the bond, the, the bond of money available, we would then submit a request for payment okay. of that. And we have that kind of money in the reserve? Yes, we do. We do. Do we have a motion? I'll move that we uh, uh, approve the uh, this contract and to uh, I guess it's a single single probably a single so we authorize I authorize the chair to uh, sign on behalf of the board. I'll second at that if he has to sign it. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Will hear any other discussion? Has anybody negotiated this price any further with them? This Lex is the best they can do? Lex has been, yes, in fact. Uh, I thought I remembered hearing an 11,000 number before. No. They were going to give us a good deal because it was Winhall's plan. It, it was not 11,000, no. What was it? I don't recall, but it wasn't 11,000, wasn't it? I think it was around 26,000, 27,000, something in that range. And now we're at 28,500. Yeah. When we, the last time we actually looked at the numbers side by side, um, Cotton was like half of the other bid we had. What was the SPP? I don't remember what it was. I remember thinking it's, it's twice what we had for Cotton. And I think we talked about it at the time. And so we're confident of the two bids we got, this is certainly the best one. In addition to the fact that he'd been working all along, so he had a good heads up of what was going on. Any other discussions? Very not all in favor of instructing the chair to sign for the, the contract for Town of Jamaica, say aye. 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 Anyone say no? Hearing none, pass. And I'll do that tomorrow. The next item on the um, agenda is a letter we received from Wyndham Solid Waste Management regarding the disposal of leaf and garden debris, and Judy would like to discuss that. Okay. Uh, before I begin, I just want to say to the residents of Jamaica, that everyone has, we have gone through a tremendous amount of transition at the uh, transfer station. It started a year and a half ago at the town meeting where we were talking about buying uh, bags for Paige and Brett. 
And then it came that we were doing uh, recycling with one per seven, and now that's changed because of issues in resale. And now we're back to uh, putting three through seven, so now the residents have had to make that change. And, uh, and here's another one coming down the pipe, which really is not going to be a change, because we're doing it all right anyway. So I have a copy for each of you, so you can read what it's all about. And basically, it's talking about uh, leaf and yard debris, and what we do with that, and uh, clean wood and brush. And I've done my homework, and I had asked uh, Mark Pluff to come tonight, but evidently something, he's not here. What we are doing right now is we are collecting all three of these particular areas of uh, recyclables. Um, and we, uh, what we end up doing is we have a, for those of you who have put things like this in the transfer station, we have a big pile that has been slightly moved because of the road that now is there for the trucks to go down and make things easier. Um, we put stumps and things like that, which is considered clean wood, uh, trees, untreated wood, natural woody debris, including tree stumps, brush, Limbs, root mats. I have no idea what a root mat is. Does anybody know what a root mat is? I don't know. And logs. And uh, we actually have the right to uh, burn those things. And the leaf and yard debris, which is coming in also, especially in the fall when the leaves come in, what we are doing is dumping that over the side so that it actually becomes compost. And I checked uh, with the ANR, Natural Resources, whether we were doing something that was wrong, and we're okay on the dumping over, and I had to check whether or not we have what's called a permit in order to burn and in fact, we have had that permit to burn since June 9, 1990. So we're legal doing our burning. Uh, the ANR said that they weren't too thrilled about the fact that we were burning, but it was uh, still acceptable. Uh, and and uh, so things are, as they stand, going really well. And uh, so we really don't have to make any changes in this uh, particular thing because the new act uh, around this whole thing called leaf and debris and clean wood and brush really takes place, uh, Act 148, the section of it takes place uh, July 1st. So that's what kind of why we're focusing on these things happening. Any questions about it? Question. Let's assume that I have a contractor and I'm doing building. Mm -hmm. And I've got a bunch of two by fours that I'm not using, I don't know, scrap two by fours. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna, is, is there a way to let them know that they can take that clean stuff that hasn't been painted and separate it, so therefore they don't have to pay for that when they want to dispose of it, they can, they can put it into the, uh, to the burn pile? Uh, I think that that's told to them when they come that they can put that into okay. the burn pile. Right. Yeah. So that might be a way for contractors yeah. to save a little disposal. Right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, in talking to ANR, uh, what I found out was that some um, people, some transfer stations, actually in their swap shop, will take some of those boards that could be usable. Uh, for people to pick up and, and they'll stick it in there and let people take that. Um, and I am seriously thinking of developing some kind of a swap shop um, and uh, so that we can have that even with electronics. Electronics is the next thing that's coming down the pipe uh, in terms of changes within the uh, uh, whole transfers 
station business. So yes, I think they, they can do it, and Mark does okay. tell them that that is possible. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. So things are. The good news is we're already doing what they yeah, want to do. Yeah, we're already doing. Nice to be ahead of you. Okay. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is um, discussing the next steps moving forward with the municipal bond. Move to address that. Okay. Um, if you recall at the last meeting, uh, there was, I had some questions as to what, what the best way for us to go uh, regarding the bond. I wasn't sure whether uh, uh, we ought to go with the, with the full 750000 or whether we ought to go with some smaller number like 600000 and then reissue or, or re request the, what additional money we were we would need the year after, and the reason for that was because we were hoping to bring the project in below seven hundred and fifty thousand. I think at the last meeting I didn't know this, but I may have had a call a long time ago. Uh, one of the things that was been recommended to me, first of all, uh, the, the 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 third option was to wait until next year. To, uh, to do the bond because uh, we really don't need the funds until around March or April, or probably the April time frame. Well, part of my decision-making process on that revolved around what the Fed was going to do with interest rates. And about a month ago, uh, the Fed was talking very seriously about raising interest rates in June. That seems to be off the table now. Uh, so right now, the money is as cheap as it's ever going to get. And the, the uh, suggestion, the recommendation I got from two or three, uh, the, both, both our lawyer and the bond bank attorney, is that we should, we should do, the, uh, do the loan this year, not wait till next year. Uh, second, uh, I learned that if we bond for 750000 and let's say we only spend 725000 that 25000 we don't spend can be used towards paying off the, uh, uh, the loan. So in other words, if we borrow 750,000, only use 725, we can take that 25,000 and use it to pay off the first payment, the first principal payment, for example, or one of the interest payments. So therefore, it, there is no you know, risk of borrowing and then not having anything to use it for. We would use it to pay, pay back the first installment of the loan. So the recommendation that I have is that we should go ahead with the full 750000 uh, at the next bond offering, which is next month. We have to have our, all of our paperwork in by the, about the 20, well, if we set the 20th, we'll meet all the deadline. When, when the bond uh, sheet has to be signed by the 22nd, the lawyer's step has to be done by the 23rd, but I think if we shot for next Monday as the, as the latest, 20th, and I think we'd be, we'd be in good shape. Now, originally, I thought that it was going to be a pretty simple process. Uh, we're going to get a rate sheet, which we just got last Friday, or I got last Friday, uh, and then we would vote on that, and that would be, be, be it. I called the bond attorney this morning, and he said, well, you, I, get, I sent you a package of stuff that has to be done. Well, I didn't know that the package had already been received, but nobody ever gave it to me. So I never got the package. So what I'm recommending, I'm gonna, what I'm recommending is that I pass out that whole package to you tonight, and that we have a special meeting, perhaps Wednesday or Thursday. I can't do it Thursday, so I can do it during the day, but I can't do it Thursday night. We have a special meeting, and give us a chance to, to, to look through that package of stuff, and then vote on it uh, at, 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 a, at a later time, before next Monday. Um, so what I'm going to pass out to you. This is the uh, this is the sheet that we get from the bond bank. Pass that down. Mm -hmm. And this is what we get from our attorney. There are a series of resolutions. You pass that down. Mm -hmm. a series of resolutions that have to be voted on. One is called the resolution and certificate. That is a three-page, four-page document that we have to vote on and then sign. The next one is a loan agreement that we need to, uh, we need to look through and sign. That's a six-page or seven-page document. 
Um, there's a tax certificate that we need to vote on. section certification that we have to look at. So my, my recommendation would be that we, we take this stuff, look at it in the next few days, and then have a meeting and uh, vote on it. I know. I have a question. Um, is the town um, in this process of the bond and whatnot, are we required to have the permitting in place yeah. um, through the state before the bond is sub submitted? No, we do not. And can you um, speak to where we stand with that permitting at this time? Uh, we have a, for the site that we've been looking at, we have a septic and water permit. That's the only permit that we've received so far because the other permits we need to get, we can't until we have construction documents. The other two permits we need, if we use that site, is um, uh, a fire, I guess a fire, fire marshal's <coughs> permit and a, um, uh, I'm writing a blank, uh, the, the, flood, flood zone yeah, permit. I was thinking flood, flood zone. zone. Those are the two permits that we have to... Uh, so you haven't submitted for those two permits? No, and we can't until we have <coughs> construction documents. You're using the word if you use that site. Because we haven't, we haven't formally decided whether that's going to be our site or not. <laughs> Someone, uh, I think Joel was the one that made the recommendation. Yeah. I suspected that it was going to come up during public concerns, but since we're talking about it, Joel suggested that we look at a property up on... Um, up over on uh, Route 30, and I thought it was a good idea, so I want to take a look at it. That's Is that property for sale? Yes. That's about, been for many years. It's about five acres, and it's about $35,000. You move your committee over address that, and then go back to us? Yep. Good, thank you. All right, so. If you go down between Dale, Dale, uh, no, Dana's house oh, yeah. and Bonnie's house. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. 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 I have one other question. Is that I don't I don't understand how you know how we can get this bond or borrow money without knowing how much this thing's gonna cost. I mean I don't wanna it's like I'm not badgering you or whatever. Sure. I'm just like I don't get it. It's like me building a house and not knowing. How much the materials and all the contract is going to do? How much it's going to cost me? As we have discussed many times, I don't want to go into the weeds, but I appreciate the question. We need to know what the citizens of Jamaica will allow us to spend before we can start looking at specifics. So we had to we had to know what the limit was. We had to have an idea what that was. That doesn't mean we're going to spend up to that limit, but we had to have permission to go forth. We have it now. Now we can start moving into specifics. We're, we're, we're doing the best we can with what we've got to work with. This is very much like when you go to buy a car, you're looking to your wallet first before you go to the Mercedes dealership or the Chevy dealership. It's kind of what we've been trying to do. The other thing that you have to remember is that a municipality has to go out to bid. So we can't, we won't know what the project's going to cost until we go out to bid. And nobody's going to bid on a project if they don't think it's going to come to fruition. So by having the bond, uh, approved means that when we send that bid out, we're very serious about what we're doing. The same thing is true when we get a uh, we, we, we get a grant to do the sidewalks, for example. We got that grant. We knew what the amount of money for that grant was going to be. Therefore, when we went out to bid, people took that bid seriously because they knew that we had money to do it. So that's didn't those sidewalks come in about two hundred thousand dollars over? Pardon me. That was but we knew that before. No, we actually went out to bid. Found out it was more, and then went out and got a, 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 I think, I don't remember what it was called, but they were, uh, they gave us another 10% or so, without having to go out to, to, to a new grant application. But, 
Well, back to the thing on the table here then. Your recommendation for us is to table on this now, give us an opportunity to read it, catch up, and then have a you know, select board gathering. Right, and if anybody has any questions, they can call me, and if I can't answer it, I'll call the uh, sure. the attorney or the uh, bond bank uh, uh, gentleman. So the, the other one I wanted to ask, you know, also in line with this, with the contractors and that, like Cotton, are they going to handle the, you know, who we're going to hire, or, you know, the different bids or whatever that come in, or is, or is that going to be us? No. Cotton will give us a detailed set of, of documents, and after we've gone through the the committee's gone through them and, and looked at them, made their recommendation to the select board. Once the select board has approved the documents, then we will go out to bid. Cotton will help us prepare those bid documents, and Cotton will also help us analyze those bids when they come in and help us uh, determine which bidder we want to use. Okay. That's how that process will work. Isn't there something called the clerk of the Project? Clerk of the Works? Yes. Uh, you can hire a clerk of the Works. Are we going to have something like that? Uh, that's up to us if we want to. Because uh, I've heard that from other towns that it's really a good thing to have. It kind of releases the select board from making, you know, set, checking on all of the things. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the clerk of the Works can be the architect. The, there's a positive to that, but there's a negative to that too. Uh -huh. The clerk of the works very often will be an engineer who can make sure that the that the architect's plans are being followed uh, independent of the architect. Mm -hmm. So, like for example, in the sidewalk project, we had a clerk of the works. Mm -hmm. uh, that did it. Right. That was, wasn't there was a cost. cost. Yeah. There was a cost. Yeah. Right. I would think you had mentioned. Oh, um, I've heard that that's the way to go mm -hmm. to have that the independent piece is the important piece. Um, back to what's on the table. You had made the recommendation for Thursday. Oh, I would have. To, I don't know what people's schedules are. That, look, but it could be at night. It would have to be during, during the day on Thursday. Thursday. I can't do it in the morning or until about two thirty in the afternoon, maybe three o'clock. Are you able on Thursday at all? Or well, Wednesday night would be fine too. Good morning. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. uh, at two thirty. Okay. I'd rather be here. Then we could do it Wednesday night. We just have to warn it. Let me see. Well, we got we got a time crunch. Yeah. Wednesday night is a little bit early. We don't have forty-eight hours. Right. It's forty-eight hours, right? Right. Um, Monday during well, the Joe, day. Joe I had, had, I had, had a question. Question. If I, unless you're not finished with the. We're not through this yet with the day. Yeah. So. But the choices, they're not a lot of good choices. Um, Thursday during the day. In the morning. Is, is, in the morning you can do it in the morning. You cannot do it. I cannot do it. Actually, I'm on the phone on electric uh, e-waste. We could do it Friday. Yeah, Friday is okay. Is Friday possible for you? I think so. Friday in the morning? Sure. Morning? Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock? Okay, so we can meet here Friday at 10 o'clock. That also gives us a chance to meet that one. Right. Because this is legalese. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And I mean, I read it over once and I, my head's spinning. Friday at 1? 10 o'clock? Does that work for you? Yeah. That gives us time to warn it and get it published. Friday is the uh, 17th, correct? Yes. At 10 o'clock at this location here. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll, have, we'll attack that on Friday. I still have something to add. Yes, is it related to this to the, uh, the bond stuff? Um, well, the building stuff. Um, I watched the select board meeting from uh, New Fame. Before I get started, let's get through the. Is this something that's not on the agenda yet, and we'll get to it in the public concerns? Or is this part of what we're doing now? This is part of farming out, sending out for bids for, for contractors. Okay, we'll say that. 
This is the bond issue. We're all set on that. We're going to be here Friday. Yeah. Okay, good. Next item has got to do with review and discuss the scope of services submitted by Sullivan Powers and Company. This is the agency that does our annual audit. These, I saw a pile of these things, so I assume everybody at least got a copy of this, so I went through the email. There's no real change um, from last year. These are the guys that have been doing this for a long time. It's a little bit cheaper this year because they've been doing it with us for so long. Um, they've got a little good grasp of the town and the, um, the way we do things. And they've been working with uh, uh, Terry and... Uh, when did that come through? On the email? The scope of service? On no, on that, this for the email for us. No, it didn't come through the email. It was the email? The what? The mail. Oh, it's regular mail. I can send it to you. Do you I mean, know? I can scan it and send it if you want. Yeah, I guess, because I haven't gotten that. That's the reason why I'm asking. All right, we can uh, scan it and send it to Does you. Does other people have that? No. Didn't. You didn't get it. Oh, I guess none of us did. I think it came at the end of last week, probably. But it came through the mail and got put in the basket. Mm -hmm. So, I guess so you want to, right? do you have time to table this and address it next week if everybody's ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to table this item and we will go ahead and address it after everybody's had a chance to read it. Um, so Paul, you guys say a lot of times, you know, this is cheaper than last year, but can you put the numbers out there instead of just saying this is less than what they gave us last year? I'll look at that. Hmm? I'll, I'll check on it. It's a fair question. I'll check on it. I don't know the, I don't have the numbers in my head. But I'll check them. Well, then how do you know it's less? Because I was told it's less. I don't have the specific numbers. When I get the specific numbers, I can give them to you. I don't. I don't have them in front of me. I can't remember all the different numbers. Well, then why would you make the statement it's less? You just let me know what I know. I know it's less. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I can give you the numbers. I know it's in a weird spot. I, I don't remember exactly what page it's on. I, I got one thing to say, and I was going to bring this up at the end of the meeting. But this has happened at the, at the meeting that we had in the town hall, mm -hmm. and frequently here, we're talking money here, and nobody's got the figures. I mean, not even specifically just addressing that last question, mm -hmm. but it's like, you don't have, nobody has it. And like, you know, sometimes you guys defer to one another, and nobody has it. Okay, we'll bring it up next week, and or two weeks. I, I, I can't remember all that stuff. Prime example, he just said the, the quote was 26, 27,000, and now we got a contract on the table for 28,5. Where did that negotiation go bad? Like, were 1,000 or 2,000 over where you were with cotton? That's what you just said. Well, I don't I don't, and, you know, and again, again, I'm just saying, if you're going to put, put the numbers out there so people know. I don't, you know, I'm not saying this, you know, to be a pain in the butt, you know, or to be mean or to be nasty or anything. It's just that. It's, it's just, just I can't believe it. I mean, my father used to be a colonel running bases all over the damn world. If you didn't have your figures in line, you, nothing happened. It's like get your stuff in line, and then, and then let's let's discuss this thing and move along. I will get that's, just, that's just a point. I will get I will get the numbers for this. Thank you. So what is this number? You've got it in front of you, Andy. Do you know? I don't know what it is yet. We'll get the numbers. That further. contract's right there in we'll his hand. Them. Right? You just handed him the contract. For the auditor. Are we are we in discussion on a number? From, do you know what the number is? I I don't know. It's in an odd spot because every year we look and it's like in the middle of the document. Sixteen thousand nine hundred. Thank you, Terry. It is in an odd spot. You would never, I mean, it doesn't, it's not like by itself, it's in a paragraph, so. It didn't take you long, thanks. <laughs> you want to know, I can go look and see what last year was. It would be nice to know if it's quick. It probably won't be quick because it <laughs> takes away from your duties, and we'll address it when we get to the next select board meeting. We're out of order anyway. And we're, we need to get stuff I done. get it for you. But I'm trying to not do it. You can call me tomorrow. Yeah. I'll do that.
Okay, the next item that we have, we had, I had a conversation this afternoon or this morning with our tax, I mean with our uh, Kevin O'Toole, who is the attorney that handles the tax sales. And his position was that we need to appoint someone to be authorized to bid at tax sale for items that vote to bid. That we need someone to put down, has to, we as a seller group need to move to have that. Uh, select that person. And it's in accordance with, and I'll give this later, 32 BSA 5259 is the law that says we need to do that. We okay. vote. What's the object of that? This is so that when there is a uh, uh, property that goes up for tax sale, mm -hmm. if no one bids on it, mm -hmm. we count the year on it. Okay. Rather than just have it languish for year after year after year. And so, <coughs> so we can start moving on. So in essence, the town is buying or attempting to buy the... Exactly. Okay. But we need to have someone, the select board needs to appoint someone to do that. Mm -hmm. The discussion we had on this topic was that the town agent ought to be the one um, empowered to do that. Does that meet with your agreement? I'm not sure what the town agent's duties are to begin with. Okay. Well, he represents the town in, in, in my, my experience with him, a number of different kinds of transactions, but it's really not real, it's not very clear to me either. Why shouldn't it be somebody who has real estate experience? Well, who's the town agent? It's not going to take a lot of real estate experience to know that there are a, no bids on the property. Therefore, we said bid. If there is any bids, we don't compete. So there's not going to be any competition. If someone bids, fine. As long as it meets the tax. What is the bid usually? Is it usually the tax amount, whatever the uh, yeah. taxes owed are, plus the fees? Mm -hmm. Taxes, fees, yeah. and um, total cost. Okay. Taxes, penalty, interest, cost. Mm -hmm. What does the town do with all this property that's now off the tax rolls? Well, then we're, we're at this point we can sell it. Look, after a year. After a year, yeah, after a year, it has to wait for a year for the owners to be able to come up with the money. Yeah. 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 But after that, we can move forward. We have properties that we've had for what they've been on limbo for a while now. Some of them, this is the second or third time they've gone to tax sale. And they have not sold, and the town hasn't purchased them, so they're still on the right. delinquent list. Yeah, when you read through those mm -hmm. announcements, you'll see the dates. Yes. Yeah. Some of them go way, way back. There's two. Uh, and nobody is on that, those pieces of property? Nobody uh, lives there, nobody uses them? Uh, Somehow. No, they're Some pieces have. of land, just raw land. Yeah. They're... There was one with a trailer on it that was going to cost some money to clean up at one point. Well, the two that I'm thinking about, the longest, the oldest, are just raw land. Yeah. yeah. Having said that, some of the ones that are going to tax sale do have people living on them, but we expect that, that they're going to not want their property for sale. So this becomes a method for us to expedite stuff and to help Terry clean up her, her, her tax rolls. And there was another reason you explained it to yeah. me, and that is that uh, whoever sells the property gets compensated with a certain percentage of what that property was. Right. The auctioneer. Is that what you were telling me earlier? Mm -hmm. No. Is that part of the expense? No, I don't think so. Whoever facilitates the sale. Uh, part of the cost of the tax sale is the attorney that does them can take no more than 15% of the tax amount for his fee. Okay. Other fees include having it in the paper, recording it in the land records. Um, but but if, those, if those properties don't go get sold to the town or to others, then they don't get their, they don't get that fee, is that correct? What we were talking about before was, was um, the attorney who said to me that If the property doesn't sell, he is still out his expenses and the air hours to do the job, but he won't get compensated unless it sells. And so his position, part of the phone call, was that he doesn't want to do that anymore. He's in business to pay mortgage. So he wants to be involved with sales, but not with putting things off because then he's losing money. This is his discussion with me today. So we're on the same path. Uh, regardless of that particular piece of the conversation, we all understand that we need to clean up the roles. We need, we're moving all in the same direction, and he is wholeheartedly in support of that. 
for the reasons stated, plus his own reasons of uh, running his business. But why would the town want to take on properties that can't sell? We don't have to bid. That's what I was going to ask you. We have the option to bid. If yes, it's not an all or nothing. We don't have to bid on yeah. some. We could bid I understand. on understand. So who's making that call? Right. We will make that call. Yeah. Okay. And we will instruct the, the town agent or whoever we appoint to bid or not bid. Wasn't there a time, and I may be dreaming this, but I don't think I have, that the tax collector got some kind of a fee? Yeah, when it was an elected position, the, the delinquent tax collector got the 8% fee. Uh -huh. That was their pay to collect. It's not that way anymore. Okay. I do it and I get right. my hourly rate. I mean, it's part of my job, yeah. on a, okay. just like everything else. So I'm going to get a motion. Well, before we go on to that, um, my suggestion was a town agent, but clearly, if we have a volunteer in the select board who choose to be that agent, we don't have to use a town agent. It just seemed like a logical choice to me. Lexa has expressed an interest that she would be willing to do that if, if, that, if uh, we ran out of options. I think we should ask the town agent, Pete Andrews, if he's interested oh, is that in that. Pete mm -hmm. Andrews. Okay. Is there a date for the tax sale? Pardon me? Is there a date for the tax sale? The 23rd. Yeah, the next 23rd. Day. We have to make sure that Pete is here. He's here. That's right. At 10 a.m. He's here now. Okay. He's here now. I don't know. Somebody stole my posting at the store, so i got to put it back up again. What's the property that's coming up on the 23rd? All of them. All of them. There's about 13 or 14 of them. Yeah. <laughs> Takes up a whole half a page in the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> it's been in the paper three times. Three times. <laughs> Does it have to be just one person from the board or can that's, it be anyone? Exactly. So let's do this. Let's appoint the town agent and as a, a backup, Lexa. That's fine. That way we've got, we were in church. She's already agreed that if, if we had to, she'd be willing to do that. But I think if, if he doesn't have a lot of link, it's a town agent, maybe he'd like to do something. Well, also, he's into real estate. He knows his business. So, so he'd be very good. Yeah, he's a good man for the job. Put that question out to him. Yeah. No, he's a good man for the job. So, a motion to that effect? I'll, I'll move that uh, we, we ask the town agent, Peter Andrews, to represent us at the tax sale. If he can't do it, we need to appoint. Appoint, okay. That's fine. Appoint him to represent us at the tax sale. If he can't do it, then we would uh, we, we would appoint Lexa to uh, represent us. I'll second that motion. There any, further, any further discussion? Is there a cap on prices on these properties that this town is going to spend? Okay, that's not on the table. That's not on the table. Is there <laughs> any further discussion on this? So it doesn't matter what it costs. Is there we any just, discussion on this point? Yeah, I just have a question. We sure. just bid what the expenses are. Is that what, how that yeah, would the minimum okay. is the tax owed. The fee I, that I understand, but those numbers can be not worth what the property's worth, which that is why is people the, walk away from them. Well, we wouldn't bid on it then. We would help. That's so, my point, Andy. Well, but that's why I think Andrews well, would be a, an appropriate guy, because he knows. And I'm asking if there's a cap on that limit. Not on this motion. This motion, we're appointing someone to represent us on the specifics. The select board can make a specific decision with specific properties. There will be properties that will come up that we are not interested in, in taking on the burden of cleaning it up or whatever. But we need to give the town the power to move forward to help clean up her list. And this is the, this is the vehicle which we're, which we're doing. The specifics of a particular property will have to be dealt with on an individual basis. Right now, we're just appointing someone to represent the town. Not to make the decision, but to represent the town. And I have any further discussion? All in favor of appointing Peter Andrus, primary, and Lexa, secondary, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. That will pass. Now, <clears throat> on number 10 on the list this evening, make sure that everything take care of.
it is time for public concerns, and I think Joel had one. Yeah, um, I was uh, watching the select board meeting from New Fame, and New Fame is in the process of deciding whether to restore or rebuild their uh, town offices. And um, they were very proud of the fact that they got most of their help, or a lot of their help, from local people. And I think that was a very good point, that there are a lot of people in this town who are certainly perfectly competent to do building, to build garages and whatever. And I think it would behoove the town to go first to local people and keep the money in the town. Would you, off, would you want us to ignore the, the lowest bidder in favor no. of a local bidder? No. Okay, so our usual procedures would be to bid it out, or put it out for RFP, and, and feel the bids. Certainly, yes. if someone locally... Well, but it, approaching them would, would be a courtesy. Approaching them, giving them the option to bid. I think, that would be aware. I think if we go to the RFP, we follow the law. If we go to individuals, then it looks like we have sort of prioritized... Well, somehow they're managing it in new fame. I don't know how they're managing it, but I'm sure they're following the law, as we will. I watch that. I'm sorry? I watch that, though. You watch that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And do you disagree with what I'm no. saying? No. And we, you know, we've we've been uh, challenged before with wanting to take someone locally that was a little higher. And, well, they were all local, but we wanted to because they had helped in the flood, and we just went with the lowest bidder because it was the least amount of money, and it right. caused some. The dissension amongst the board that we didn't go with the other guy. It was a little bit more. A little bit. Yeah, but those deals were all, we knew all those people. It's not going to be like this. We're going to follow the, the, because it's such a touchy business and because there's an awful lot of people in Jamaica who do this for a living, we're trying to be as fair as we possibly can. And with the municipal banks, we're going to follow the policy. Now, when somebody comes up and presents to us similar bids, we have the option of being able to decide, well, do we have a history with a particular guy who's done a very good job or someone who's let us down along the way? We can take those in, into consideration. Primary consideration is going to be the, the bidding process. But certainly, how another town does that, they may have another uh, policy that we don't have. But we're going to follow the policy that the select board has to follow and best we can and hope our local guys win the bid. In theory, if it's somebody local, he doesn't have to drag his equipment from Maine to do the job. So in that respect, he ought to, have to be able to beat somebody out of Maine. Having said that, we've seen bridge builders out of Maine beat local builders. So in that context, we won't really know until A, we get the plans, we get everything put together, Terry sends out the RFPs, and then as it comes in, you know, we would all love to give it just to locals. But we have locals bidding on each other. So we, we have to right. on They're businessmen too. Exactly. And we, we have to say that. There could be justification for a higher bid though. I mean, is is the absolute that the lowest bid is taken? No. 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 So, so yes, leaning towards local bidders who are reasonable. We better have some good objectionable, I mean, <clears throat> objectionable, I'm sorry, objective reasons to do that. Because yeah. I don't think any of us want to be put in a position of having to make subjective decisions based on who we like. Right. And we did have to do that with FEMA because it was federal money. We yeah. had to take the lowest bid. If we didn't, we ran the risk of the town paying the bill instead of getting the money from them. Well, fortunately, this isn't the thing that I should. That's right. <laughs> but that is why we did that and that. And it just uh, it opens us up to all kinds, of, all kinds of issues if we try to get too subjective. So I'm inclined to be as objective as possible unless I've got a really good reason. But objective means ability as well as price. Yes, it does. It also means history. Everybody, there's lots of different things that blend into that. How does a call go out for an RFP? Lexa will put it together by Lexa. I really apologize. Terry. Terry will put it together. Now how does I will put out? this one together. The architect will put this one together. But the, how, it how goes, does the public? It know? goes in the paper, oh, the local okay. paper. <clears throat> okay. um, it gets posted in public places. Mm -hmm. If there is... I'm speaking about FEMA again, just because we haven't done a building, but mm -hmm. I sent it 
to contractors that had bid before or expressed interest before. I emailed it to them. So if I have a list or I know somebody's interested local, I'll certainly send it to them to make sure that they get it. Isn't there some kind of a, a magazine or a publication that deals all the stuff and broadcasts it pretty much everywhere? Yeah, once it gets put in the paper, it will go everywhere because there are websites that watch the reformer for bids and then they put it on their website and they charge contractors to get the information bigger contractors pay it smaller ones don't like a finder's fee yeah, kind of yeah. like mm -hmm. but there's many of those mm -hmm. so will the information be posted on our website yeah now that it's up it will be and on both the boards Yep, in as many public places as I can find. <laughs> One of which will be yours. We'll put it right there. There is no boat and board inside. Oh, yeah. inside, yes. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, anything else from any other um, business, any other public concerns? One other one. Mm -hmm. So Cotton is going to kind of be the general contractor, right? No. Cotton yeah. is doing the architecture. Okay. The general contractor will be selected after we get the architect. Issues and okay. that will go through the through the process. Okay, you, I was just curious with the uh, bridge down there in Brattleboro, you know, that was m not completed and all that on time. Mm -hmm. That I don't know whether it's a standard practice or not, where they have like insurance. In other words, they set a completion date, and if the guy can't complete the work, then how is it going to get done? And who's going to pay for it? And I think that they issue like an insurance policy or something on what well, we've yeah, done. Usually yeah, what we've done in the past too, the bonded, but also in the Goody Bell Bridge. How much did we get back from Goody Bell? I get fine. Uh, the fines were eleven thousand on Goody Bell Bridge for not finishing on time. We had a date in the contract they had to finish. It cost them five hundred dollars a day for every day over. Yeah, I was like, you know, one thing about the bridge. Uh, this this either here or there. It's kind of like the property taxes. You know, when you get to a point where the guy can't meet the contract and says like you're gonna get punished to the point where, you know, they're gonna walk away. This is know? a big enough project, so they would have to have a performance bond. Okay. That would if they walked away they're just you would have the money from their bond to finish it without the town putting out any more money, basically. And that's another factor that comes into our decision. If they're if they're not if they're small enough in our mind that they could not sustain that, that would put them down the down the uh, list. Okay. Yep. Um, any other public concerns? The sidewalks they get repaired or are they repaired? I've made in contact with a couple of people. They're going to come and look at it. Is it about the bottle? Did yes. the basin do the? Uh, yeah, I I called him. He's going to come and take a look at it. Do they have any responsibility in that? No. I talked with the with uh, the engineer Chrissy Leg, and she said that the state doesn't allow any kind of warranty as part of the project. They, 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 there's no warranty. Yeah, that's the answer she gave me two years ago too. Yeah, same idea. Right. All right then. Um, do we have any other business, Lou? Uh, I just want to report on Castle Hill Road. If you recall, at our last meeting, we wanted to go out to bid on the Castle Hill Road project. Before going out to bid, I contacted VTrans and uh, said we're ready to go out to bid because uh, she had told me in her original email that until uh, uh, we have a contract signed, we can't actually do any work. I said, can we actually go out to bid even though we're not going to do any work? And she said, no. She said, the reason is because there has to be a historical preservation review and there has to be an environmental review. And I said, well, when can that be done? She's, her only answer was, uh, that's the reason why we gave until the end of 1998. 1980, uh, 18. Uh, uh, 2018, I'm sorry. Oh. So the point is, is that she, and I asked her, how quickly did these things happen? She said, well, every town in our district just, just received notice, and every town in every other district is just about to get their notice. They're all going to be asking for environmental and uh, historic preservation. Mm -hmm. So she said she has no idea when that's going to be on the uh, on the radar. Mm -hmm. So 
right now we just have to make sure wait that we until don't fall it happens. <laughs> yeah. But she knows we're very anxious to get this done. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Anything else? No. Judy, do you have anything for us? Yeah, actually, it, it matches what you're talking about because I, uh, I, I uh, know we talked about the prospect of where to put the transfer station while the bridge is done, but I don't think oh. I have to worry. <laughs> At any rate, what I did find out is I had a, I went up to visit with Scott at Windhall uh, Transfer Station, and I talked to him directly about whether uh, the east, the south side, north side? The Rossville side. Yeah, the Rossville <laughs> side <laughs> uh, could use it. And talking with him and sharing what we, I thought we would have to do, he, he said it was really impossible to do that that he thought he would have to lay the, our garbage aside and try to figure out how, you know, we can cost the town, their town, our amount of money. So, um, so really, I think when this ever happens, <clears throat> it might happen sooner than we think if we fall through uh, the bridge or the, the culvert, that uh, if we can use the fire department parking lot, that sounds like it's the best deal for us for the transfer, um, the different recycle bins and working with the solid waste, that kind of thing. <clears throat> I also was talking to Scott a little bit about uh, what they're doing in terms of the recycling since the numbers have changed for us from uh, one to seven to one and two, and then the others going into the trash. Uh, and they actually are having <coughs> TAM, and I know we've talked about TAM, which is over in Arlington, do their uh, picking up their trash, which is doing all of it, all of the recyclables. And uh, what his recommendation to me, because someone had asked me, about whether that was a possibility for us to be able to do one through seven and have it carted away. He, his recommendation was to go for a while, and he even suggested a year, to figure out exactly how much our uh, cost of our compactor would increase by the fact that people are putting more plastics into the, uh, trans, uh, to the compactor and to do a cost analysis. So uh, I, th I think that that's what we need to do is to look, because uh, we may want to go uh, with somebody else. I don't know. I know you guys down at Wyndham Solid were having a special meeting. Is that this Thursday? Well, we've already talked about, about it, that? and we're not going to change. You're not going to change? No, we're going to continue the way we uh, okay. have been. Proceed. Okay. So, uh, but I thought that that was a good idea to see what the difference is in front the cost. Yeah, oh, I thought that uh, it would be the individuals that would bear the, the, uh, the additional cost because they would be throwing it inside their, their yellow yeah. bags yeah. as opposed to the town. The town would be, right. other exactly. than the fact that uh, whatever additional amounts get in there it might cause us to do it every two weeks instead of every three weeks. Yeah, and that's so, that's yeah. actually, because now it's monthly, that pretty much a month we before a month. the uh, trip <coughs> team comes to pick up the compactor. Or the, I think the point is though that TAM takes more, <coughs> takes the one through seven versus, yeah, they take so then there would be less in the bags for the people to pay for? Correct. So, so and that would you got to remember though that TAM doesn't just right. come up and do Windhall's recycling. Right. They come up and do Windhall's yeah, trash. Stuff. So they wouldn't do our recycling unless they did our trash. Yeah. So we would probably have to put it out to an RFP right. to see whether wouldn't, whether Tam's price to do our trash is would be better than better triple than triple Yeah, right. That and sounds like a good uh, idea. When, um, Londonville also uses uh, Tam. So <clears throat> it's something, I think, to keep in mind as a possibility, but at the same time, um, we'll go with what we got. So people have been really, really good about making the adjustment again, and I feel bad about that, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles.
rumbles. Right. It's like, you know, it's just another thing that everything gets passed on to the people. You know? I mean, my, if I was the President of the United States, I'd say, like, if you all want to make these plastics that can't be recycled, we're not going to accept them into the state. Well, to me, my personal feeling is that what we really need to be doing is going to the manufacturers and say, cut it out with all of these plastic. I mean, everything comes in a little plastic something or other, and it, it's ridiculous. The, and uh, I think I said at the last meeting, the fact is you try to crush them to put into the, the $3 bag or the $2 bag, and they just don't crush. They'll bounce right back into uh, place. So, but that's where the real issue is, is with the manufacturers in there. They think that it's wonderful to have everything little package. But until we rule the world, <laughs> we'll continue moving along this path. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Andy. Uh, I might have mentioned at the last meeting or the meeting before, someone had been calling me about uh, concern about some adjacent property that I've got some pictures I can show you because uh, another landowner, another adjacent property owner called and was just like really upset that I serve as a health officer. He feels it's a health hazard and so does the other resident. And from the road or from, they, they can't make a complaint of him burning garbage or any sewage or mm -hmm. any kind of, it, it, it's very simple and the, the rules I have to follow. And he had me, well, I talked with him for about an hour on the phone and he begged me to come up and walk his property line to, you know, spy on this, to take a look at this guy's property. And I, I really don't feel obligated to and invited him to this meeting and he can talk to you as a Jamaica Board of Health. But I was working on, on Coleman Hill Road. I don't want to tell what this guy's address is because I don't think he's doing anything wrong. I mean, we don't have zoning. Uh, and I took some pictures from the road, hoping I wasn't going to have an arrow go by my head or, you know, hear a gunshot. But, you know, it is maybe an eyesore, but I don't think there's anything that I can do about it or we can do about it. So I invited him to the meeting. Very upset mm. about this guy. It sounded like a, I'm no attorney, obviously, but it sounds like a civil matter. I would think that's true. Mm -hmm. So just in case that comes up or that he comes in the office, I told him and I would tell you. Thank you. So it's two people. They're both. First one's on a pile. Okay. First one I can pull right. And you're right. It may have to go, they may have a civil action, but if we don't have any zoning, right. unless you start seeing rats running around or something, that's a health hazard. They, they haven't seen anything. Thank you. Um, I have nothing further that we have already covered, so I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'm all that. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, that motion passes. We are adjourned at 27 after 8.